Hi, Natalie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, it's so great to be here. Uh, I know, and happy Valentine's Day. Yes, happy Valentine's Day. We were saying just the best day to be talking about love and self-love and all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. I actually, uh, this is like the only thing that I own that's red. <laughs> oh, I love it. Specifically for this occasion, there's this beautiful little boutique that's right next door to our new shop. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to actually go buy something that's specific for Valentine's Day that makes me feel good and colorful. And it's hilarious because it stands out so much in my closet where it's like <laughs> white, gray, one red shirt, and then everything else is black. <laughs> I totally get it. I um, did my nails bright red today, although I Ooh. can't say that it's just for Valentine's Day. I'm a big red girl. It's like kind of surprising that I don't have my red lipstick on right now. I usually do that for all videos, but you know, we're going all natural today. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, give us a little background. What's your, what's your story? What are you? So obviously I know that you are a holistic stylist, uh, but maybe kind of tell us how you came into that career path and, and we'll get to know you a little bit better. Yeah. So I have been doing personal styling since 2009 and, I really launched my job in the middle of the recession. Everybody thought I was so crazy, but I it was sort of happened by accident. So I was working for um, Kiki de Montparnasse. I was doing fashion PR, hosting events, had what on the surface seemed to be a dream career for somebody who had always wanted to work in fashion. But uh, for a while, I was feeling like I wasn't creatively engaged and there was something missing and there was some toxic work environment things that I'd encountered in high fashion. It was a bit more competitive in ways that didn't really resonate with me. And so I thought, you know what, let me just step back and decide what I want to do before engaging in a new um, contract or getting into my next job. So I started literally offering closet cleansing to friends and, you know, helping people get kind of thoughtful about their clothes because I thought, oh, well, this is something that I can do based on my styling background, doing photo shoots and all this for years um, that doesn't require a commitment. So I totally thought it was just like an interim, you know, gig. And yeah. I launched a website. The more that I started telling people about it, the more it grew organically and of course, then from there, people want to know what to fill their closets with. So it became shopping as well. And so the the company itself just grew really organically. I started also writing around the same time. Blogs were really big at the time. So I launched Natty Style and I encompassed all of the blog and the business under that name. And so that was my Instagram handle. It still is to this day. And my actual nickname growing up was Natty. And by dictionary definition, it means dapper and well-dressed. So I kind of oh, had to embrace it. Yeah. When it came <laughs> to choosing a name, it was funny that my whole life I hated the nickname and now I chose it as my business name. So <laughs> that's the universe has a hilarious sense of humor. Yeah, it definitely uh, does. I love that story. I love, uh, I mean, especially the origins of launching something that would seemingly be like a luxury, you know, I, and not, I'll get back to why I feel like it should not be considered a luxury service. Uh, but, you know, during a time when people are like really conscious of saving and not spending and to see that it still grew and flourished, uh, I think that really shows, you know, how much people need help in this area. I know I certainly do. You and I have talked about this in the past. I love things for the home <laughs> and I really struggle. And I feel like I have a good aesthetic and an understanding of like what looks good together and how to like mix and match styles. Like I'm not worried about what I'm doing in a home space, but for some reason, when it comes to buying clothes, it's like, I just freeze. Or I spend way too much time online trying to research like what's the perfect white t-shirt and then I give up because there's like 8,000 options and then like the one inevitably that I'll find I'll look and I'm like oh it's $200 I'm not spending $200 on like a plain white tee because I know I'm going to ruin it in three seconds Totally. Um, and then I just don't buy anything you know and right. then I go to get dressed again and I'm like cool so same clothes that I don't want to be wearing. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I hear that story like 10 out of 10 times. It's like, you know, and it happens for both people who feel like they do love, like for you, you feel like your aesthetics are so tuned in. It's not like you don't know what you like. It's just, you know, the, the process of getting there can be challenging. And sometimes I'll have clients come to me and say, I have no idea what I need to be doing in terms of clothes. I just, I need a full refresh and I need help. And then I have other clients who say, you know, I actually love shopping, but I somehow wind up with so many beautiful clothes and feeling like I have nothing to wear. And sometimes yeah. it's just the objective eye coming in fresh. You know, it's somebody who doesn't know what you wear every day, who doesn't know, um, hasn't seen you constantly, isn't your own, you're not seeing out of your own eyes. It's someone who's seeing you from an outside perspective and can say, oh, well, yes, these 12 nude sweaters are beautiful, but they all serve the same purpose. So if you're trying to create a diverse wardrobe that's going to tackle all of the things that you need in your life, let's shift where you're uh, placing closet space, where you're placing money, you know, let's look at it as a complex puzzle that kind of all fits together. Um, I love that approach. And I love that you started with helping people streamline their closets, you know? I think this is such, uh, I mean, obviously we help all of our clients in, in this space too, sort of decluttering throughout their homes. I love doing a closet edit because it's so emotional and it's so intimate. And I just, it's such a vulnerable conversation between two people when it's like, you're looking at your shopping habits, you're addressing things like weight gain or weight loss, or maybe an emotional attachment to how much you spent on something, you know, mm -hmm. There's so much that comes up when you're just going through somebody's closet. And I know it comes up for me too. Uh, it's funny because I fully admit that I wear like maybe 5% of what's in my closet. I don't have a lot of things in there to start with. My husband definitely takes up like 80% of our closet space. Uh, but I feel like I have to keep things in there. <laughs> because I have the room to fill. And then I look at it and I'm like, doesn't fit me, doesn't fit me, don't love it. Uh, like maybe I would wear it, but I wouldn't really be excited to be putting it. And it's like, I know, I already know that if I was helping somebody else with it, I'd be like, get rid of all of this. Like it's not serving you any purpose. Uh, and you deserve to walk in and feel good about how you're starting your day. You know, like, yeah what am I going to put on my body? And I'm looking at all of these things that support me in how I want to represent myself to the world. Exactly. And I still just cannot get there. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you just proved my point exactly. Like this is part of what you do. And sometimes you just need that external eye and someone to give you permission. That's what I always say it is too, is sometimes you just need someone that can say, you know what? it's okay to let go of that Chanel blazer. I know you spent a fortune on it 20 years ago, but you're not earning that money back by it sitting in your closet. Yeah. You know, you're not putting it on if it doesn't look good on you or it doesn't fit you well, or it's no longer reflective of your current lifestyle. Um, it doesn't matter how much you spent, you know? And I think those kinds of things sometimes are hard to get around because, you feel guilty. You feel guilty getting rid of something that you were given as a gift. That's another big one, you know? And there are, of course, occasions if you think you're going to see your mother in law and she's going to ask about that piece of jewelry, keep it, you know? But if it's someone gave it to you a while ago, you're never going to see that person. Or if you do, you would never be wearing it anyway. There's really no reason to have it in there because it does the opposite of what you want it to do. So I always say that holding on to things just gets in the way of you being able to see the things that you actually do love and want to wear because everybody has the same experience as you where, you know, well, not everyone, especially yeah. working a lot in New York, there's a lot of closets that are just bursting because our closet space is so little. Yeah. Um, but I also have a ton of clients who have large closets. And so it's easy to hold on to things just because why not? You know, you have the closet space or you're scared. I think that's another um underlying emotion with a lot of the things that we hold on to is you're worried about that one occasion where you won't have the right thing to wear. Mm -hmm. You know, you're worried if I get rid of this one thing. Well, what about the day when it's uh, a certain temperature outside and I need shoes that I can ruin because it might be raining and also X, Y, Z and all these factors. And then I don't have it anymore, you know? And yeah. the reality is 
it's probably not going to make you feel great even in that circumstance. So there's probably a better option for you already in your closet. And if not, you know, maybe we get there, but it's, it's often, even when you're looking for things in your closet, I think that having less helps you be more creative because maybe you don't have the perfect top for that pant and you don't have the perfect top that you thought you wanted for that occasion. And then you remember, what if I wear a dress instead? You know, you look into another section or you think about it in a different way and it, it forces you to really use what you have. And uh, again, to never land on something just because it's there and you ran out of time and now you're wearing this stupid blazer that you never really liked. And, you know, yeah. they can kind of make or break a day, right? Like if you go out and you don't love what you're wearing, I mean, I've even had experiences where I'm like, oh, I got ready in such a rush and I wish I had worn this other thing. And I almost have like outfit regret, you know? <laughs> so it's like, it's very, it's just it's sometimes counterintuitive to think like you need more to feel like you have a better wardrobe, but it's not always that. Yeah. And I think that that is sort of like a fundamental belief of mine. You know, I see that in the home space. Um, and when we talk about decluttering or sort of living better with less, it's for me, at least in all aspects of your life, you know, like I'd rather have one beautiful glass of red wine than three bottles that are garbage that every time I take a sip I'm like look what does this taste you know exactly or yeah. even just like with your thoughts your emotions like the things that are swirling around in your mind this is why we journal and meditate it's all with the goal of like let's simplify and streamline what's going on in there so that we can see clearly and so that we can you know make better decisions and feel better about life Exactly. And with clothes, it's, uh, it's so easy, I think, to dismiss the whole industry sort of as like, it's um, non-essential, I guess. Like there's obviously, you we need clothes to like stay warm or provide a certain safety and security. And, you know, I'm sure it's also like legal, like we have to wear clothes when we go out. <laughs> uh, but beyond that, like the aesthetics of it, like that also should not be something that we dismiss so readily as being like extraneous. It really is how you are putting your external, like the way you view yourself externally out into the world. And that does have a lot of emotions attached to it. Yeah. A thousand percent. I mean, you mentioned the, the emotional element too, of having someone come in your closet. And that's, I think what drew me to the career in the first place when I started doing it is building these personal connections with clients was so much more rewarding than what I was doing previously. So, you know, I was in a much glossier kind of always doing magazines and photo shoots and those kinds of things that you would think, maybe were more exciting for someone who was interested in fashion. And when I started doing this, I realized, no, the reason that I was drawn to clothes in the first place is the amount of self-esteem that they can bring you and mm -hmm. the, the power that they have, you know, to really transform the way that you show up in the world. And so that's kind of the ethos that carried through everything. And the reason that it became a business is because it came, I think, from this really heart centered place, whereas previously it was like, you know, if you're doing a photo shoot, you're trying to sell product at the end of the day. And yeah. my goal is not that anymore. My goal is to really listen to a client. And we joke that it's closet therapy because it's like, it, it is that, you know, it's understanding the root reasons why a person needs X, Y, and Z. Um, and it's not like, this is a heavy session, you know, like it's yeah. playful and it's fun. And it's like, it all happens in a really, um, a really fun way. So I think to your point too, having started this during the recession kind of speaks to that where it, it could be seen as a luxury service. It's certainly not inexpensive, but what people generally come back to me and say is it was so worth the investment because I think I spent less almost over time, you know, and you're, investing in learning how to make more thoughtful choices too. So even like most of my clients will come twice a year. It's usually a seasonal thing, 
But I've definitely had clients who say, you know, it's my 40th birthday or I'm recovering from having kids or whatever the catalyst is. I've recently been divorced. And then, you know, maybe I don't see them again for five years and it's yeah. kind of a big treat. And then they take that learning and continue on, you know, I love that. Um, and I love both use cases of that, you know, like for me personally, the service that I would need, I think is sort of slowly just redoing all of it, you know, mm -hmm. then I love learning along the way. Uh, I think it's, it's so weird. Like nobody really teaches you how to dress for like who you want to be, you know? Like totally. for who you are, for what you want to be, how you want to project yourself and also like for your specific body type. And so like when I look at my Pinterest, like, you know, all the outfits that I save just to hopefully like give me some direction if I need to go shopping, then it's like, I go try those outfits on and I'm like, what is this garbage? Like, this doesn't look anything like that photo. And then I'm like, oh, because like, I don't have a six foot tall, extremely slender body type, you know, like yeah. Yeah. I have curves that I'm a lot shorter than that or what. I, and so there's certain things like, like Cindy Crawford, for example, is like, that's my, I love her style, like her simple style jeans, a beautiful white button down shirt. But when I put on a button up shirt, it like doesn't, I don't know if it doesn't look good or something happens to my insides where I'm like, please take this off of me immediately. <laughs> like this does not look like who I am as a human. And it's definitely not how I want other people to see me. And it's so funny because then I keep like aesthetically, I'm so drawn to that vibe. Like it's so classic. It's so timeless. And I keep trying to force it to make it work. And it just keeps giving me this like yucky feeling. Inside. Yeah. Well, and that's huge, right? I think that that's a very, very common thing. I remember learning that lesson when I was in middle school and I would order from the Victoria's Secret catalog. Mm, I used to love that catalog. That oh my and Delia's as a teenager. Oh yeah. Delia's, too, Delia's was a little bit less misleading for me given that, you know, it was targeted <laughs> towards me. Whereas Victoria's Secret, I'm like, I definitely do not have a 32 double D bust and a teeny tiny yeah. waist. Like I'm 13, you know, and I would order these things and they would arrive and I realized this, this discount connect in advertising. And that happens, you know, whether you're kind of your own advertising, you're using your Pinterest board or whatever, or your, your favorite style icon is somebody who's maybe different from your body type. And so connecting those threads is definitely a big part of it. But I also think it's so transformative sometimes to have the opportunity to step outside of your comfort zone and it goes kind of beyond, I was listening to, I don't remember which podcast it was, but they, oh no, it was an audio book by Tara Schwert. Do you know the source? She I don't said, know. It, I think it came out pretty recently because I feel like I keep seeing advertisements, but it's also very targeted, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> they know what you listen to. Um, so I believe she's a neuroscientist and she was talking about ways to kind of like, you know, reverse the narrative or switch things up. And one of the, the, bullet points that she said is even just wearing something different Ooh. and it's true like when you think you know people talk about taking a different pathway to work or eating something different in the morning or anything that's that sort of takes you out of flow and makes you more conscious will help you be increase that neuroplasticity you know and so I think I that. Tubing is the same, like so many times clients will say, oh my God, I never would have picked this up off the rack and I feel great in it. Like I'm excited that, that I can wear this color or the shape or whatever it is. And I think it, it is almost in a way creating new neural pathways to think of yourself in a new way, you know, and see yourself in a new way. And it can be kind of hard because everybody has preconceived notions about who they are. You know, I'm not a person who wears that. I would never yeah. wear bed or I would never wear heels or whatever it is. And so it it's almost like it, it can be very invigorating, I think, to try a little something different. I never thought about it that way, but that's so interesting to me. And I'm definitely going to check this out. Uh, and it really resonates. Like I will put on a hat when I want to like feel fancy and accessorized. <laughs> Totally. And then the minute I put it on, I'm like, who do you think you are? Like, you are not someone who can wear a hat. Right. Right. 
that it's inner so voice. It's so funny because one of my closest girlfriends, like we both bought these like beautiful felt, you know, like they're so lovely and we chose all the like embroidery and like so much meaning behind them and we never wear them. And we've had this conversation multiple times where we're like, when we go to brunch, should we both just wear our hats? Like, should we <laughs> commit to doing this and like being in public and being like women who wear hats? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, feel I mean, it's like exhilarating. Like you walk out and you're like, everyone is staring me at me. Like they all know that this is wildly <laughs> out of my comfort zone. And then you're like, nobody cares. It's just a hat. Nobody cares, uh, right? But so much thought goes into it that it's hilarious. Um, yeah. And I'm happy yeah, to I mean, know that that's actually like doing something good for my brain too. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. The metaphor of being able to wear multiple hats, right? It's like, you're literally putting on a different version of yourself. It's not that you're putting someone else on. It's just like, there is a version of you that bought that hat. So that version of you deserves to live in the, in the real world too. You know, yeah. I have a client who, um, is not at all into clothes or style at all. And some of her girlfriends took her out shopping recently and she bought like a pair of jeans, a blazer and a pair of boots. And she was telling me, and as we were doing her closet, I was like, oh, well, this is unexpectedly great. You know, there was like yeah. a lot of clothes that she hadn't shopped in forever. She literally has holes in her sweaters. Like, you know, she was just like, I just don't care about clothes. But she put, she was like, I had this outfit on recently and I met my, the current guy that I'm dating. And I know it's because I felt so awesome. She was like, my light was on, you know, like I just felt great about myself. And then I met this person and I want to feel that way all the time. That was essentially like her trigger for coming to me. She was like, I don't care about clothes, but I obviously do care about having that feeling again. So, wow. Yeah. It's like that's, power. It's literally power. It is. And that's what a sweet and beautiful story. I'm so happy for her. I know. And and too. That's Great. why it's perfect that you offer this service because for someone who doesn't have an innate interest in clothes or shopping or any of that, it's beautiful that she can work with someone like you and still get the positive end result that she's looking for without having to like go through the struggle of forcing herself to you know, have this experience, you know? Totally. It's so totally. cool. Like, now I don't have to think about shopping. This is great. Yeah. She's like, such a cute tomboy. She's like, I'm just done, you know, and it's, it's there and it's in my closet. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, those sweet. stories are the, re they're the best thing about my job. Like that's also just what kept me going through this whole career journey that I've been on is like, the second I started interacting with people and they would tell me, you know, I asked for a raise at work because I felt confident and I got picked up at a cafe and nobody's ever picked me up randomly before, you know, somebody asked for my number and I think it's just because I was feeling confident, you know, it's like, it shifts yeah. the way that you feel. And so it, it makes all these other shifts in your life happen and not to put, you know, too much power on that, but it, it is true. And it really is because of the effect that it has. It's not about how much you buy. It's not even about necessarily buying fancy things. It's just being really thoughtful about them and making sure that you then embody your best self and are able to, to exist in the world the way that you like at your maximum potential, you know? And I've, that. so I've since started moving into the reason that I'm now calling myself a holistic stylist, because I didn't really explain any of that before, but that's also a relatively um, new shift is I just feel that that same power, as you very well know, is completely tied in your environment too. So I found I've always cared so much about my environment personally, and I'm very um, reactive to what's around me. Um, whether it's, you know, aesthetically, but also keeping things tidy. And I'm very strict about what's in the house, just the way that I am in the closet. And so it was a very, again, organic, natural explosion of um, my career that people started asking for that. So it was, you know, the clients that I know pretty well, they love working with me. I know their aesthetic so well, they would start to say, you know, can you do my living room over again or my office over again or my apartment in the city you know it was a lot of like let's just do a makeover um without having to wreck any walls or do anything serious and um so it's become a really holistic process 
and I got my certification. I'm in the process of getting it now. And so it's, I think part of it for me has also felt very natural that I moved out of New York city officially. Um, where are you now? Connecticut? Connecticut. Yeah. So we're in Connecticut. When we had our baby, we kept our West Village place. We're actually still renting it out in hopes that someday it makes sense again to get back to both. But um, I think in nesting out here and redefining my own self and my own environment, I realized even more so the importance of that that part too. And so it's um, it's expanding and it's expanded in that direction, which has been fun. That's so awesome. Yeah, I love interior styling and it just makes such a big difference in how you feel when you're in your home space, you know? Totally. And I really am a big believer. I know that you are too in stuff being a physical clog that reacts internally too. Like I, I feel anybody who has done a big purge knows how cathartic it can feel. Right. And I do feel like that physical cleanse helps the internal world too. You know, they're, they're so closely tied. They really are. And that ultimately is why we do what we do. You know, I love helping people get settled in their homes. Like that's the foundation of how you're going out to your day. I mean, the two things combined, right? Like what you are waking up, what surrounds you when you're waking up and how you're starting your day and what you are putting on your body. This Mm -hmm. is going to set the tone for how you go out into the world, you know, and why not set yourself up to be feeling supported and wonderful and in your best self, you know, without the distractions of there's too much. I can't see through all of this. It's chaotic. It's hectic. I don't think we talk enough about clutter and the physical impact it has on your body. Like it truly does. It's not that we're just saying like, it looks nicer for you to have less and it's easier to keep it organized. Your brain has to recognize actively everything that surrounds you. Mm -hmm. So if you're walking into a room and it's, you know, spray paint all over the walls and a million colors and so many textures and all of these things, your brain immediately is like, there's so much to take in just so that I can even like show your mind, you know, what it is that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Like all of those things are happening. And so if you're adding on layers and words and logos and there's too much, you know, this is why in a closet, we try to use all matching coat hangers, right? It's like one less thing for your brain to have to be like, there's a pink hanger and a wood hanger and a felt hanger, like just make them all the same and simplify that one thing. And it feels more cohesive and it feels calming. And that's why like, you don't have to have this whole extra mental synopsis to register that everything is different. Totally. And And I also find, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say, I also find, I'm sure you hear from your clients too, that it feels like it's empowering. Like it's one action step that you can take if you're feeling a little bit out of control, you know, maybe you're feeling disorganized in other elements of your life or you're, you're in a, in a fuzzy moment, you know? Um, and it's like, what are the action steps that you can kind of get, do to get yourself straightened again? And sometimes that's a really helpful one, you know, is just to have a catalyst, take your hands and like physically shift and change something so that you feel different and then Mm -hmm. better. And then in, in turn, you know, that can affect so many other different things. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And that's the, you know, shifting energy that goes back to like, everything is energy. And that's why you feel great sometimes when you put on an outfit that's why you feel meh sometimes uh why certain colors invigorate you or make you feel more you know whatever attractive or powerful um whatever it is you're trying to feel uh and even you know back to sort of the mental relief of having a very organized or streamlined space like think about all the closets that you see in photo shoots right most of them are like pretty monochromatic Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of pattern. (laughs) Like there's a reason why when you're looking at like a beautifully styled closet, it's like they stay in such a small arena. You know, it might be like white into nudes and blush. And there might be like one pink thing at the end. 
uh, and there's space in between every coat hanger. Like all of these things are designed to like really soothe your mind and not give you too many options to look at. It's, I don't think it's realistic. I don't know anybody whose closet actually looks like that, you know? (laughs) Very few, very few, yeah, very <laughs> few. And we, I never love color blocking, uh, my husband's side of the closet because he's like a plaid shirt guy, you know, oh, and yeah, like, so where sorry. does this one go? It's red and it's blue. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Like, which side of the spectrum are we putting? And you can never achieve that, like really beautiful gradient of what yeah. happens when you only have solid color. <laughs> Yes, it's totally dependent on the client too and and what kind of colors they gravitate towards because you know there are clients obviously who love color and oh, yeah. and print and they're allowed to do that and it's great and let's embrace it, you know. Um totally. but it's still yeah, keeping it organized and also just being thoughtful about um how things work together. I think, you know, going back to your explanation of interiors too, if you've got all kinds of crazy things all in one picture, that's not going to work. But luckily with a wardrobe, there is a little bit more flexibility. You're putting on one outfit per day. So you can, you know, choose a wild and crazy top. If it speaks to you, let's just make sure that you have a grounding bottom that that's going to, you know, carry all those tops um, and tie them together rather than having too many disparate things that don't work together. And then you end up having what feels like chaos instead of what feels like joy. What's your, do you have like a favorite piece of clothing that you own? That's a great question. I definitely have my things that I go towards a lot. I mean, in the winter, I'm a real sucker for softness. So I'm just really, really addicted to cashmere sweaters. Like every single day I'll put on a great pair of jeans that I love. I have um, a pair by Silver Lake that I've been gravitating towards a lot lately and also Amo. Um, denim, I tend to recommend for most clients non-stretch. So sometimes people hate me for that because it's not necessarily the most comfortable immediately. (laughs) Everybody loves a stretch, but they don't wear well. And so they end up looking sloppy and stretched out a lot more than, uh, a denim that doesn't have as much stretch. So, um, those are some brands that I found do really well. Like mother is, one of my less favorites because they tend to be thinner denims and a lot of stretch. So people usually love them right away. Like in the store, they feel great. Cause you put them on, you're like, Ooh, this feels like a glove, you know, like I yeah. put it on. And then a week later, you're like, why does this brand new jean look like crap? And it, it tends to do have to do with the denim and the stretch. Um, so I, I think like having a great pair of jeans goes such a long way. And I yeah. also I was just about to do an Instagram post about this actually that, I feel like denim tends to be something that people overbuy. I think it's like that easy, easy thing to think like, I just need a new pair of jeans and you go out and you buy one that's like, okay, rather than really spending the time to think like, well, what do I need it for? Is it because most of my tops are too cropped and I need a higher waist? Is it because I need a dressier jean? Maybe I need a black instead of another blue, you know, to be a little bit more thoughtful about that tends to be a category that fills up quick where people have, you know, 30 pairs of jeans and really only need three or four. Wow. I can't even imagine where I would put 30 pairs of jeans. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, for some, that's an exaggeration for others. It's not. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we've definitely done, uh, done a lot of closets where people love clothes and they have the space to store them. And it's so fun. You know, I love seeing people's fashion choices and and the things that they keep for themselves. It's yeah, yeah. a real treat. <laughs> it is. It's great. It says a lot about you. You know, your your clothing says a lot about you when you think like, well, do I care about fashion? You don't have to care about fashion. It's just, yeah. you know, do you care about what do you care about? Let's start there. You know, yeah. do you feel like having a really minimal aesthetic? sends the message to the world that you care about other things, then great. Let's figure out what those minimal pieces are, be super thoughtful about them. And then you don't have to shop again until they wear out. You know, I also think sustainability is such a great place to start from when shopping. I mean, really for anything, but particularly with fashion. And it's so interesting to me what people are doing now with recycled textiles. Uh, you can get some really stunning pieces. Like we have so many opportunities now to shop secondhand. 
Mm-hmm. Um, even for luxury pieces, uh, you know, I think kind of starting with like the real, real, and now there's just so many other organizations that are doing similar things. And it gives you the opportunity too to like resell some of your pieces when you're ready to move on with them. And, uh, I don't particularly have the patience to like sit and posh mark things one by one <laughs> and do all of that. Uh, but I know a lot of people who do, um, you know, and there's so many, especially here in Los Angeles, like there's probably a hundred different places that yeah. I can just take bags of clothes and shoes and resell and, um, and then also be able to get stuff that is gently used and not contributing to, you know, a cycle of creating more new, uh, or even if you are shopping new, all the labels that are like a hundred percent cotton or, you know, like H and M, I think, what is it by 2025, all of their clothes are going to be made out of recycled materials. Um, and you can textile recycle there, which is awesome. You know, I used to be like, never shop at H and M. And now I'm like, I'm on board again. (laughs) Like I love all the things that you're working towards and making it so easy for people to recycle textiles in basically any, like, I don't know if there's a shopping mall in America that doesn't have an H and M. And people still don't really know that they can do that. Uh, like, you know, you have a t-shirt that's stained and you're going to throw it in the trash instead of doing that and having it sit in a landfill, you can just take it with you next time and just drop it off. Right. They have the big containers right by all the checkouts at H and M, uh, and made well, you know, you can bring any yeah. denim doesn't have to be made well, could be completely destroyed and drop it off at a made well store. And they give you $20 towards a new pair of jeans, you know? Yeah. I know. I I work a lot with a company called Dora Mar. Um, That's, I always say, a more kind of curated version of the real real. They do designer luxury resale. And their kind of concept is um, it's tastemaker profiles. So you can see how these people are wearing their clothes. Like you can link to their Instagram and see, you know, their style aesthetic and say, okay, I want to shop her closet. I like her style. Um, That's awesome. It's great. And I think to shop, it's so much more possible when I look at something like the real real I'm like oh this is this is a really difficult like it's a lot to navigate lot. you know things are styled in the men's department instead of the women's that are like just literally like a skirt put on a as a turtleneck and labeled a turtle is like everything is crazy so they're great and they I take a lot of stuff for my clients um and we'll do it under my closet. So my closet for their, uh, site is actually a lot of my client stuff mixed in with mine too. So that way my clients have access because otherwise they need a certain amount of Instagram followers. And, you know, a lot of people don't do any social media, but would love their obviously items to be resold somewhere. So they're really great. Um, and I agree. I mean, I think regardless whether you're donating or you're selling, it doesn't behoove anybody to have extra stuff sitting in the closet. You know, it's not helping anyone. So sometimes people will, again, back to that guilt, you're thinking, oh, I have to hold on to this because I feel guilty that so-and-so gave it to me or that I spent a bunch of money on it at one point, but it's more useful to give it to somebody else or sell it where it can have a second life and actually be worn and be used, you know? So it's always, it's always worth donating or or selling or whatever, just to give something another opportunity to really use. And I also think like, again, speaking of H&M or all these other companies, it doesn't even matter to me as much if you're buying from a sustainable company. I mean, that is amazing. And I love to pay attention to that. And for a long time, that was part of my, my ethos and branding. And I took it down just because sustainability is very built into my whole thing. You know, I don't have to claim it from the rooftops because my real, I think what's important for anybody who's shopping, whether you're shopping with a stylist or, or you're shopping sustainability, you know, sustainable brands is when you're being thoughtful about what you're buying, you're already being sustainable. Like yeah. if you really are only buying things that you love and that you want to wear for a long time and you're buying less because of that, that to me is true sustainability, whether it, you know, it doesn't matter as much that the brand is claiming to be a certain way. And God bless everybody who does those sustainable brands. I'm so thrilled. Like, I'm so, so thrilled that the fashion industry is starting to turn towards that. I really, it's like horrifying when you see the waste that goes in, but it's also, you know, I mean, the sad nature of it is you never know how true any claim is. So the the most powerful thing you can do is just control how much you're buying and, you know, make sure that it's then utilized again after you're done with it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And we talk a lot with our clients about becoming more conscious consumers uh, with the same idea, you know, like sometimes you have to buy something in order to help you stay organized. You know, we don't claim to tell people that they never need any sort of a product, but when you are going to buy something, be mindful about like the quality Um, the use case, like, are you, if you move, are you going to be able to repurpose this item or is it specific only to this one space? Like there's so much that we can take into consideration to make sure that we're not just buying things without thinking it through. Um, And you're right. That does, it makes the life cycle of that product so much longer. And I think you feel really good when you have like taken time to think through your purchases and they're not just these like impulse thing that's where the guilt comes from you know Mm -hmm. it's like you leave what's uh, poor target I feel like they always get picked on it's only because they have such wonderful things (laughs) like (laughs) price point that everyone's like sure I'll take home these 700 other things that weren't on my list exactly Uh, but those tend to be the things that you feel the worst about even though you feel the best when you're buying them and it's because there wasn't a deep thought process behind it there isn't an emotional connection. There wasn't a specific need that it's filling. And now it just becomes kind of this thing that you have to deal with and lug around with you. But totally. I mean, and there is so much room for also the silly joy piece, right? That like, yeah. sometimes people get like those two confused where, oh, I'm not allowed to buy this like really wild card item because I'm not going to wear it a thousand times. But if it really brings you joy, like, you know, it's, that's okay. That's value. If it's, if it's actually going to be like that one fancy occasion, I wore that dress and I felt so amazing in it. And it was only once, <laughs> but it was amazing. Then that's just as valuable. You know, it's just a different place. Like mm-hmm. my, my, my sort of through line when I'm doing a closet, as I say, it should be either foundation foundational or fabulous. So it's uh, you know, those basic, your perfect white tee, your perfect jean, Maybe it's a boring black long sleeve top that you just use to wear underneath certain things, you know, those things, or it's something that every time you put it on, you're like, I love this thing. I feel great when I put this on, even if it's just a casual cardigan, I want you to love it, you know? And, and to me, it's even like across the board. I remember like, a I don't know, three forever ago, I remember going through my workout clothes and realizing that I didn't have real workout clothes. I was Mm -hmm. downgrading anything from my closet, you know, some old Abercrombie tank top. And now that was my workout thing. And it, it didn't make me feel like I wanted to work out. Right. (laughs) Cause it's so gross. Yeah. It was actually, I did the same thing with, that's how I got all my pajamas and all Mm -hmm. my like workout tops were basically like old t-shirts that now had like a stain or a tear. And I was like, why would I want to put this on in any other scenario? You know, right? right. And so doing that, but like I had enough one day and I was like, you know what? I just want all matching, all black pajamas. That's what I want. Like, that's what I want to sleep in. That's what I'm comfortable in. It'll look cute when I wake up and get coffee in the morning. Uh, and the minute I did that, I was like, I feel so fancy. Like yeah. <laughs> my pajama door looks at, and it's not like they were great. You know, some of them are like Victoria's secret. Some are from Nordstrom, sure. like just comfortable things that I felt really good sleeping in. Yeah. And it made such a difference. And that even today, actually, it's funny. I put on the very first set of the matching ones that I bought this morning. And I was like, they're looking a little threadbare. <laughs> yeah. They're probably, you know, six or seven Which is years good, old now. right? That's <laughs> yeah. my favorite thing when them. I come into a closet. Yeah, when I come into my, like sometimes a client will say, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed at how like beat up these shoes are. And I'm like, are you kidding? That's, I'm thrilled. That means you yeah. wore the, the heck out of them. You know, that means that they lived a full, fabulous life. They did, yeah. they did all the things they're supposed to do. I want to see things that get worn out. That's, oh, that's, that's a good best. thing. Yeah. Okay. I keep telling Chad, um, I have a problem with footwear. I've had surgeries on both of my feet. Um, I actually have to go get x-rays later today because they think that they might have to redo the surgery on one of the feet. Okay. All of that to say, like, I have a lot of emotion around footwear and I, you know, regardless of where it comes from, I'll blame magazines. But in my mind, it's like a sexy, beautiful woman on vacation with her husband in like Rome is wearing like high heels, you know, like this is how I see 
a beautiful, powerful, attractive woman. It's always in heels and most likely they're like pointy toes. And it's all things that I cannot wear ever again. Mm -hmm. And I remember being so sad on our honeymoon because we were traveling through Europe and I was like, I can't ever feel cute. Like everywhere I go, I'm like in like a sneaker or something. I was like, this sucks. Like I want to feel sexy and attractive. And I want my husband to look at me as we're walking through all of these beautiful streets and be like, wow, you look so good. And you know, of course he does, but I don't feel it. Mm-hmm. And so I've, I'm on like the quest to find the perfect shoe that you can travel in that goes with every, cause also like we travel with only a carry on and we'll go for weeks so I'm, like, I'm not going to bring like my new balances, <laughs> you know, like my classic running shoe. Yeah. I'm like, what goes with everything? What goes with like when you're wearing leggings and what goes with like a cocktail dress? <laughs> What's comfortable and how do you feel good in it? Right. I mean, I feel like sometimes it's trying to thread too many needles and you are just going to need a couple of options. Yeah. But I think I also say that like now is the best time in the world for women who don't love heels because never in my experience of fashion has it been so celebrated to wear not just sneakers but also flats like flats and kitten heels rule right now I mean I think the return of sky high heels is coming for sure we were seeing a lot of like crazy platforms and all of that again but right now it is there are so many beautiful shoes out there and the majority of my clients and myself quite frankly are in that realm of like below three inches for sure. Some is flat, 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 you know, some is just a kitten heel. And I think, um, you know, in that, in those like travel scenarios, I always opt for like a dressy sandal or a dressy flat. So if you can, and then you'll still probably need your travel sneaker. You know, I love a kid because it travels so well. It's so small. It takes up no space and it's a little bit like more streamlined than say a new balance or something chunkier. Mm -hmm. Obviously those have more support. So, you know, you have to play around with it, but um, the dressy so sandal. sexy and attractive. <laughs> <All Yeah. the support. laughs> but also like sometimes it's then just pairing it with something that works, you know, like yeah. if there's something in your wardrobe that you really can't get around. So say it's a sneaker, then just instead of trying to put it where it's like square peg round hole, just like go for it. Just be like, I'm sporty now. Like this is my yeah. new look. I'm going to wear a romper instead of a dress, you know, or, or whatever it is um, to find that balance so that you still feel like it's pulled together instead of this like wild card element, you know? Yeah. That throws the whole thing off. And I think that's, I've gotten more into uh, like cute fashion sneakers now, you know? Mm, totally and yeah even just like a classic pair of adidas um and then I do find that I'm like you know what I don't need to wear like a pencil skirt and a blazer to work it's my office I could wear like jeans with adidas and like an old concert tee and a blazer like there's something that I can do different so that yes. you're right it does feel more cohesive and sort of like on purpose Exactly. Um, and I love also, you know, I used to hate that people went out of the house wearing their workout clothes like it was an outfit, but now you really can, you know, like there's so many beautiful matching sets. And that to me is the perfect way to incorporate like a more running shoe or something when I'm like totally. dressing up leggings or making it um, a little cuter. It's funny. Yeah. It's like front of, we're going to Ireland um, for our anniversary in a month. And I was oh, like, I know so we're fun. just going to be like walking everywhere <laughs> like, yeah what to pack yeah you'll need a good I mean at least you can wear a boot because it's still like coldish so that's yeah. always good like you can find a great boot that's super comfortable hopefully and that's like I feel like works so well with most outfits yeah. um I do love like a classic Chelsea boot all boots I mean yeah yeah it. combat boot I mean I have a, a, a Valentino combat boot that I got two years ago and it was one of those like, okay, this is a, a splurge. I got to think about it. And I loved that thing. I mean, I've worn it, like it has huge, huge, um, like a huge lug sole on the yeah. bottom. So it was super fashionable. It was like the beginning of when the massive chunky boots was coming out. So it just felt like I was immediately drawn to it. I was like, this is the boot. I want this boot. But also the fact that it was really comfortable and had tread on the bottom meant that I wore it in like ice. Like I'm wearing, it's yeah. like my practical boot, which is yeah. hilarious. <laughs> and like, you know, I mean, that, that was like, 
a good example of, I was, I was very thoughtful about it and I didn't go for a cheaper version. I didn't try and like, you know, yeah, like placate myself with another version. I was, I was ready to splurge and it was very worth it. That's so awesome. Oh, I love boots. I love winter I clothes. It's like my absolute favorite. And, you know, going back to what you said with like the coziness of winter, I love a cashmere sweater and a scarf and I love yeah. jackets and boots, mittens, all of the things. The yeah. Best. My favorite is summer though. Funny enough, because I feel like most fashion people love the opportunity for layers and I definitely do. I love blazers and all that, but I love a sundress. I'm from California originally. And I just, I feel like it's so easy to be able to put on one thing and be out the door with like sandals and, you know, yeah, that's, that that's definitely my is the easiest uh it's funny I'm also from here obviously California yeah uh, but I think it has made me averse to all I'm like I don't want the sunshine anymore true I don't well, want any of this <laughs> that was my experience when I was in LA too I was by coastal for a while and I had such a hard time come fall because there were no seasons and I felt like yeah. I don't have an opportunity to reinvent myself per season. You know, now it's like the fall and winter, you wear different things, you eat and drink different things. You have an opportunity constantly be shifting. And it is a little hard when you have the same weather all the time. It's easy to get a little bit stagnant. I remember um, meeting someone at a cocktail party like a decade ago who had moved to LA and then back to New York. And he was like, the day that I realized I had to move back. I was driving my convertible. Everything was perfect. And I realized I couldn't feel anything. <laughs> and he was like, I just felt numb because I did. I'm such, I was so in a, unable to sort of mark the, the changing of time or things like that. So, you know, even if you are in the same climate, I think it is kind of an interesting practice to say, how do I reinvent myself constantly in just a tiny way? And that doesn't mean you have to be buying things new all the time, but maybe you pull something from the back of your closet and you, you know, say, this is my, this is my fall cardigan, or this is, you know, what I'm going to do to make it feel like the season at hand, even if the external elements aren't there, um, you know, just to, just to switch yeah. it up and kind of give yourself an activity and a challenge to stay, stay alert and like, thoughtful and mindful about what you're putting on your body. Yeah. I definitely have seen myself gravitating towards all the like rust colored things, like olive greens. And it's funny because it's still like a tank top, you know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> cool. Because it's, you know, still 75 degrees outside. Yeah. Another perfect sunny day. But I just crave that fall and winter vibe so much that I'm like, how can I just at least bring in the color palette? Totally. Uh, like yesterday I was wearing a cropped short sleeve sweater. <laughs> that was my like, okay. I want to wear a sweater, but I know I'm going to be warm and I'm running around and working all day. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, well, this is close enough. At least it gives me the texture on my body of like, I'm wearing a bulky sweater. <laughs> yeah. And you could put it with a jean short if you want. You know, I did yeah. that constantly. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to be sweating if I have pants on. <laughs> so let yeah. me just put that combo together. I mean, LA is, is great. There's, there's, uh... funny, but I think that's why like people make fun of us. Cause it's always the girls in like a hoodie and jean shorts and Ugg boots, you know? And it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We get that. It's not hot outside. We don't actually need to be wearing like <laughs> fuzzy snow boots. Yeah. Uh, we just miss the vibe so much. <laughs> well, Ireland hopefully should give you a little weather for sure. I'm so yeah. jealous you're going there. We're both my husband and I have never been, and it's been on our travel list for a really long time. So Damn. Yeah, we actually, this is our hit. third time planning this trip. Oh, oh wow. Um, so hopefully we will actually make it there. <laughs> the first time uh, my husband, a week before his, he was working for a startup at the time and they decided to go after another round of funding and he had to stay because he's the person in charge of the finances. Uh, so they were like, sorry, you have to cancel your trip. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Like, oh, this is horrible. And then, and I told him at the time too, I was like, I will be so supportive of this. If you can tell me you're actually going to stay at this job for like a reasonable amount of time. No. So not only did we not go to Ireland, but then he also wasn't working there like three months later. Ah. <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> and then we rebooked it a couple of years later and then pandemic. 2020. And okay. 
Yeah, you can totally travel to Ireland. All of the hotels are closed and all the pubs are closed. <laughs> you can come here. <laughs> like, right. You can so hang out in the more. middle of a field <laughs> with well, the sheep. <laughs> Uh, and so this time I was like, I'm not planning it because I'm tired of it. And I think that the universe doesn't want me to make these arrangements. Uh, and so we, and we're actually going to London. And then I was like, I think from London, we'll just surprise Ireland. <laughs> like last minute, right. we'll just get a flight and go over. I love that. Well, I'm definitely rooting for you. <laughs> Third you. time's a charm. I mean, it took us a while to get here and it worked out perfectly. You know, I, I also like, I feel like everything always happens the way that it, divine timing is absolutely always at play. Oh, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Yeah. Thank you for I'll spending see. Valentine's day together. Yeah, <laughs> it's a nice start start the day. The yeah. best way to start my day. Yeah. Um, how can people find you and follow along on your journey? Um, Instagram is the best natty and a T T Y underscore style. Um, that's pretty much me across the board. So I am also on, uh, threads and I don't use it all that much, but I would love to hear from you there and encourage me to do it more. <laughs> and, um, uh, my website is natalydeclev.com. And I also just recently relaunched my blog, speaking of sort of exercises in, keeping it fresh. I felt like at the new York, new year, I was feeling a little stuck and stagnant and I was missing some extra creative element besides just the styling and, and the private clients. I was like, I really miss writing. And I used to write for magazines and websites for years and years. And the industry has changed so much and things had shifted during 2020. And I sort of got away from fostering that side of my brain. Um, so nattystyle.com is back up and running. It's cool. a blog. It's fun products that I love. It's things that I'm working on at the time. It's outfit ideas, closet cleansing ideas, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, nattystyle.com, nataliedeclub.com and at natty underscore style is my social handle. Awesome. So fun. And I'm yeah. so happy that you're writing again. I think that's cool. And it's, um, you have so many wonderful topics that you can share your expertise with. That's so Thank cool. Thank you. Yeah. It's fun. It's really fun to do it in a no pressure environment. You know, it's fun to do it literally just for, uh, for fun and to share with my clients and my, my readers and things like that, rather than having any kind of external, you know, publisher or anything like that involved. It's nice. Yeah. Gets those creative juices flowing. <laughs> well, thank you again so much and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Elsa. You too.